Just got the 2021 Farmer's Almanac Guide. Pretty excited. So you've got an iPad, you've got an Apple Pencil or a Logitech Crayon or this $30 stylus from Amazon that works pretty much just as well as the Apple Pencil. And now you want to take killer notes on your iPad. And why wouldn't you? But you don't know if you should get good notes or notability because they're both awesome. Well, you've come to the right place. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the newest versions of GoodNotes and Notability updated for the end of 2020 and beyond. Let's go ahead and figure out which one's right for you. And this video is presented by, you won't guess it, Paperlike for your iPad. Get rid of fingerprints, get rid of glare, and add an awesome pencil on paper-like texture when you're using a stylus. Link in the description. So I'm a transparent person. Right off the bat, I prefer Notability because it has voice recording and GoodNotes does not. Now if GoodNotes did have voice recording, I'd probably choose that, but it doesn't. So let's talk about voice recording for just a second and all the new features that Notability has added to it. So here's what you can do. So when you're using Notability on your iPad, you click the little voice recording microphone icon and it records audio. And then you can play it back and retrace your handwriting and your notes and it synchronizes it. So basically you can relive your notes, relive a lecture, whatever. It's awesome for students, it's really perfect. But now there's new features of Notability that you can do with your audio clips. You can rename them, you can reorder them, you can trim them, you can merge them, you can split them, you can voice boost them, you can equalize them. A lot of great things that you can do with voice recording on Notability now, but assuming that you don't need voice recording or that's just not a top priority, let's continue to talk about the differences between these two apps. All right, so let's give GoodNotes some love now. So in an upcoming update, very soon, they're adding a huge new feature, which is document sharing. So if you have somebody else that's using GoodNotes, which you may or may not have somebody in your life that's using GoodNotes that wants to work on a document with you, but you can basically do slow motion Google Drive with Apple Pencil support document sharing on your iPad. Now with GoodNotes, you can share a document, someone else can work on it. It won't update in real time, but you can both collaborate on the same document. So that's coming pretty soon in an update, and that's pretty great. GoodNotes also just has a more sophisticated, intricate, and standard looking file management system, which a lot of people like, including me, and has its pros and cons. So basically you have your standard folder and subfolder system for organizing all your files. And if you're somebody who's really into organization, you're going to like this because you have all of your notebooks and documents and images and all that kind of stuff within a folder for whatever you wanna name that folder. And you can have subfolders as many as you want. So this gives it a very desktop-like experience, something you would find like you know on Google Drive or on your standard Finder or Files Explorer on Windows or whatever that's called these days. And you can either have it as a list or a grid and it's just a proper file system. Notability on the other hand is just dividers on the left side and then the dividers content on the right side. It's simple but you just don't have the organizational structure like you do on GoodNotes so you might prefer one over the other but there's a big difference there. GoodNotes also just has more things going on. So you have more toolbar options, you have tab options, you have the ability to hide the status bar and more. It is more clunky, and if you want just a simple note experience, Notability is far simpler and cleaner overall. Kind of depends on what you're looking for. Notability definitely has that streamlined, simple note-taking experience, can just get up and go, whereas GoodNotes has a little bit more customization, a little bit more options, um, and a little bit better file management system, which I know a lot of people like. Now, giving Notability the chance to shine again in an upcoming update, which will be out very soon, it has a new storefront for themes and planners and stickers that can help you decorate, animate, and otherwise just improve your note-taking experience. And hopefully developers make this into something cool. There's a little marketplace so you can install stuff and really make it your own. So if you ever need to be your own hype man or hype woman, uh, Notability is there for you. Notability also just has the general feature set of being able to add stickers and stickies and GIFs and stuff like that right into your note. Now before we go any further, I want to take a second to thank Paperlike for sponsoring this episode. They make the best room protectors for your iPad. Let's go over why you need one for yours. So for starters, the iPad Pro and pretty much all iPads get a crazy amount of fingerprints. This is a matte screen protector, so the fingerprints pretty much go away with this on. Secondly, you know when your iPad is super reflective? 
Well, as you can see just through this, this kind of dissipates the glare and the reflection to something much softer. But the most important thing is that because it's a matte screen protector, it does add a little bit of kind of grit and resistance to your stylus when you're writing. And I mean, you can hear that. It basically sounds like you're writing on a piece of paper and it feels much more like it. Writing on an iPad without paper like isn't terrible, but it's kind of slick and it's just nowhere as good as writing on an iPad with paper like. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check out paper like for your iPad. I also prefer notability shape and line detection. So pretty much any shape, circle, square, rectangle, triangle, etc., that you draw on notability and then you hold, it'll turn that into a shape, a clean shape. And you can adjust the dimensions of that and you can also change the fill and the outline or the, the perimeter. And that's really nice. Now, notability does kind of have this, but you have to go into the shape mode and then you cannot customize it nearly as much as notability. And you can also do this with straight lines without going into the shape tool in Notability, whereas in GoodNotes, you do have to go into the shape tool to do things such as straight lines. So I'm a big fan of how this works on Notability. It's not bad in GoodNotes, but I love this for making quick graphs and stuff like that on Notability. And also with this upcoming update, Notability adds the ability to do curves and arrows that it will auto straighten out or fix for you. Now, what do both have? Both have a presentation mode, so if you need to present something that's on your iPad to a projector or an Apple TV or something like that, they both have modes dedicated to this, including laser pointers and other things such as that. They both let you choose between scrolling up and down or side to side, although GoodNotes does this a little bit more organically. Both support document scanning, file importing, mouse support, iPadOS dark mode, and multitasking. Multitasking on GoodNotes consists of pulling up a separate GoodNotes app side by side on the iPad. So you get basically two full GoodNotes documents side by side, two full GoodNotes apps, which I kind of do like better. Whereas GoodNotes, you just open a note side by side in the same app. But one benefit that Notability has is you can technically have side by side by side app support. If you pull up another app, so you'd have like Safari or Notes or Mail or whatever you want on the far right and then two notes on the left. Whereas with GoodNotes, you cannot do this because you already have both apps taken up on the right and left. Both have different paper templates, but GoodNotes has a lot more, almost kind of an overwhelming amount because you have to go through a lot of different options, but GoodNotes has a lot more. Notabilities are simple and I wish they had more. I really do wish they had more, but they do provide a, a Dropbox folder with different templates that you can import manually, which is not as good or is convenient, but it is a workaround if you want to use different templates with Notability. And now both have a favorite slash uh, quick access toolbar for your favorite strokes and uh, pencil tips and highlighters and stuff like that in different colors and sizes. Uh, I kind of like the new implementation in Notability a little bit better though, so I kind of give it the edge there. And one of the last distinctions that I noticed was with importing. So. Both of them, you can share things to the note from like mail or anywhere, just using the share sheet and it'll import into Notability or GoodNotes. And then both, you can import things manually within the application from files or elsewhere. Now, when you import a photo, for instance, on GoodNotes, it'll just import that photo and that's it. You're just looking at the photo. Whereas on Notability, it'll import that photo within a piece of paper, basically, which is not as nice. It kind of just throws it onto a piece of paper in a folder or a document, which just isn't as nice. However, GoodNotes only officially supports images, PDF, Word, PowerPoint, and GoodNotes documents for importing. So if you have something such as an Apple Keynote, you can't import it into GoodNotes. However, with Notability, since it kind of just throws it onto a page, you can actually import anything really, and it'll just throw it onto a sheet. So for instance, that Apple Keynote that I couldn't import into Good notes, I can import that into Notability. And everything else is very similar. They both have multiple stroke options, although Good Notes does have one extra. They both have an eraser that you can erase the whole stroke or partial stroke. The highlighter now goes underneath the text on both of these applications. Notability has the marching ants trail, which I personally do prefer, and I like the selection tool better on Notability because you can resize quickly without going into a second menu and things like that. But both of these apps have really caught up to each other in terms of features. The last remaining thing is really just voice recording, and then there's still the big difference between organization, but I don't think that's ever going to change. So really, those are the things that you need to know between these two applications. I love both of them. I think that they're both great. 
but notability is simple and it has the voice recording so that's why I stick with it but otherwise I think I might prefer good notes because I do like the organization structure and I do like the writing experience just a hair better and of course all the paper templates so let me know what you think of both of these applications leave your favorite down in the comments below thanks for watching and make sure to check out paper like for your iPad